As the United States continues to face challenges from other global powers and tensions continue to rise, the man in charge of much of our fleet wants to reassure Americans we are in good shape. Four-star Admiral Daryl Cottle is the U.S. Fleet Forces commander. He's in charge of the entire Atlantic fleet, all ballistic submarines, including the Trident subs at Bangor. He sat down exclusively with King 5's Greg Copeland. The partnership we have with this area of what we do here in the Pacific Northwest is a vital part of the greatest Navy in the world. Obviously, we have a big military community here, a lot of Navy uh, between uh, the parts of the carrier groups and the subgroups. Um, what would you tell those sailors and their families? I would tell them that they're just part of something special. They're part of a, a Navy that is global. It's, uh, it's so vital. So much is, is, uh, goes over our seas. Our sea lanes of communication are just never been more important. The Navy is the one out there protecting that. It is also the Navy that is part of the power projection of the United States. You have been very vocal about making sure that the Navy is prepared for anything that lies ahead. And I heard you say recently that, and I want to quote this, no adversary in their right mind wants to confront the surface fleet. What do you mean by that? Well, it's just so lethal and so capable and so uh, um, combat ready. And so when those ships are out there deploying in these oceans that we have in our far seas, that that is a force that is really, really ready to conduct combat operations. And uh, they're trained at the highest level. The, uh, the technology on board is just extraordinary. And uh, the lethality they bring with the ordnance and missile systems on board really just can't be matched. Now, am I concerned about uh, hostilities kicking off in some place? Of course. So we try to deter that. That's our primary effort, to deter conflict. And we do that by deploying these forces around the world. We do that by the strategic deterrent forces, much of which is home ported here in the Bangor area. Make no mistake about it, you know, the People's Republic of China fields a very capable Navy. There are certain places that they just don't match us. And one of those is another reason I'm here this weekend is the undersea. Our submarine force and our undersea forces really just sustain an overmatch over everyone else that it is so important to the Navy and to uh, our country's national security and national interest. We don't want any chinks in the armor of that overmatch. So we continue to invest and build the world's greatest submarine force, and that's such a powerful part of that overmatch. So when strategic competitors, China, Russia, whoever, think about confronting the Navy, they know they have to go against that world-class undersea force. Usually we don't know where those are going, what they're doing, when they come back. It's very quiet, and I think probably the Navy likes it like that. However, for the first time since 1981, we're going to park one in South Korea very publicly. What kind of message does that send to North Korea? Oh, I think it sends a very powerful message, a message of commitment to South Korea, a message to the world that we have extended deterrence uh, for many countries that don't have nuclear weapons and strategic deterrent mechanisms themselves that we are going to partner with them and make sure that the United States cares about that relationship deeply. To have a world-class Navy, you have to have a world-class maintenance organization. And so part of the maintenance enterprise is to make sure that these dry docks are in good condition, that they're not susceptible to uh, falling apart in a big seismic event. As you know, that's been a big concern for us and we're working very hard to get that squared away up in this area because this is an area where earthquakes are prevalent and we don't want that to disrupt our ability to conduct that maintenance. Uh, I mean, the mental health crisis is obviously something that has been a problem all across the country. The armed services is no different. To lose a shipmate due to suicide is one of the most devastating and horrible things that can ever happen. So we take this extremely seriously. I was just in the process a few days ago of doing an all-hands call, and I asked the, the audience there of sailors that were in that group, how many have knew someone within the service that had committed suicide, and most of them raised their hand. That to me is unacceptable. And so we're taking this extremely seriously to get after this on many fronts. 